friends, and welcome back to Apocalypse Talk with your host, Reagan Parenton. Today I want to cover on two news articles which were published just this week, July 26th and July 26th, from almost opposing news sources, uh, politically speaking. So all of this is common knowledge, and I know a lot of my subscribers are nerds and understand this information clearly already but any new people to this channel i just want to set the record straight that um, we are living in a world of lies and hallucinations denial you name it so let's start off with fox news okay this is the, this is the golden ticket one again i'm here at the library with my, my laptop so i'm just reading straight from this in a corner, hopefully I don't get kicked out because I'm too loud. My voice can carry and I'm talking into a wall. Eight, the, the title reads, eight years, nine years, six years ago? All of these with question marks. A climate change activist's guide to doomsday. The end is going to come soon, unless it doesn't, is the subhead. And there's a video at the top with um, Al Gore and his speech comparing the Uvalde shooters to climate change deniers, seeing as how they didn't step up to the act, um, that's what climate change deniers are doing, his, is, is, is his comparison. So he, I'm going to read straight from the article. Advocates of combating climate change are increasingly invoking doomsday scenarios to pressure President Biden to take unilateral action to lower greenhouse gas emissions, despite a history of such claims falling flat. The rhetoric is coming not only from progressive activists, but also Democrats on Capitol Hill. Lawmakers in particular have intensified their doomsday prediction as hopes for a climate change deal have waned within the Senate in recent days. Bernie Sanders told supporters that if immediate action was not taken on climate change, an immigration and public health crisis was likely to appear by 2030. Right on, Bernie. Quote, thousands of people are dying, said Sanders. Quote, you're going to see more mass migration, more disease for the sake of future, future generations. Our kids, our grandchildren, we have got to act. Concordia University echoed a similar message when publicizing its climate clock. Launched in 2020 to give world leaders a sense of urgency, the clock purports to denote the amount of time humanity has left to address climate change to avoid the most dangerous consequences of global warming. At the moment, that figure stands at just under seven years. Activists say that is time left to avert disaster by limiting warming to 1.5 degrees. In 2019, Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez suggested that the humanity would be done by 2031. Quote, millennials and people, you know, Gen Z and all these folks that will come after us are looking up and we're like, the world is going to end in 12 years if we don't address climate change, and your biggest issue is how are we going to pay for it, she said. Well, I ask many people in public if they have a death wish, because this is suicidal. Continuing, critics note that the doom and gloom is nothing new. They say it's a part of a long-running strategy to see proponents of combating climate change lay out alarming predictions of global catastrophe. People have been proclaiming the end of the world since forever, quote, all have been wrong, said Steve Milloy, who advised President Donald Trump on staffing the Environmental Protection Agency after the 2016 election. Quote, they make these end times predictions for a variety of reasons, ranging from ignorance to politics to personal aggrandizement. Yes, aggrandizement, you little miracles. You drive around your new Corvette, huh? Some point to former Vice President Al Gore as the poster boy for the strategy. Gore has made millions and won a Nobel Peace Prize for his climate change activism. But some of his major predictions have failed to come become reality. Hoorah! Pump the oil! In 2006, Gore told audiences while marketing his documentary, an 
inconvenient truth that the world would reach a point of no return in 10 years if the global economy did not transition away from fossil fuels. Likewise, Gore in 2009 cited evidence suggesting that there was a 75% chance by 2013 the North Pole would start becoming ice-free for a portion of the summer. Some experts say the reason why such predictions prove faulty even when they're backed up by scientific studies is because it's difficult to gauge the economic and social impact of changes in temperature. Mm -hmm. It's increasingly difficult, quote, to translate temperature increases into changing weather effects using predictive models, said Myron Ebel, the director of Competitive Enterprise Institute Center for Energy and Environment. Quote, most of, the t most of the time, the data doesn't line up, or scientists assume a larger temperature increase will happen than it actually does, and that skews the entire prediction. No room for errors here, folks. The human brain cannot tolerate that. Go have four more kids. I'm sorry. They won't live until 20. Critics say that studies trying to analyze the impact of changes in temperature rely heavily on correlations rather than causes. Doomsday predictions have only increased as climate legislation on Capitol Hill has stalled because of Democratic infighting. Last week, 60 House Democrats echoed the message when calling on Biden to declare a national emergency on climate change. The move would allow the White House to mobilize emergency powers to lower carbon emissions. Quote, if we don't really begin to lower emissions, this planet has no chance. Representative Alan Lowenthal, Democrat of California, said recently, we have, quote, we have a few years left and that's it. The planet is dying. Democrats have also tried to capitalize on recent heat wave besieging the East Coast as proof that climate change is getting worse and dire action is needed. Malloy says such tactics ignore broader trends in data when it comes to climate. Quote, climate alarmists are trying to surf a wave to pressure Biden into declaring a climate emergency. What do you think? Let's read the comments. 6.1 thousand comments. Should we even... Should, should we even go into it? Because here Deep South says, the end of the world due to climate change has been around since the late 60s. Oh, and uh, we were all going to freeze to death before 1980. We just don't know. The sun plays a role. The Arctic is warming up. Yeah. We should we even bother? Okay, let's go to our next article. Mm, some of that fluoride water. Quick break. Do you know how America works? We can learn about our constitution and laws and all bullshit. You don't have any say of what happens. So that's why you should boost your brain power with boost your brain power from consumer reports. I advise cutting out the fluoride, taking more omega 369s for brain fats, drink clean water, eat whole foods, avoid anything processed or anything you can't pronounce in the and the ingredients, exercise, get about say, seven hours of sleep to refresh your brain, meditate or do something relaxing for about 10, 15 minutes a day at least, and um, hug your best friend. Okay, the next article comes from number 10, Philadelphia. Dis disinformation on climate change leaves lasting marks as world heats. That's the head, the subhead is, quote, even as survey shows the public generally has become more concerned about climate change, a sizable number of Americans have become even more distrustful of scientific consensus. There is not a meteor headed towards Earth. In 1998, as I'm going to read from the thing, end quote, in 1998, as nations around the world agreed to cut carbon emissions through the Kyoto Protocol, America's fossil fuel companies plotted their response, including an aggressive, aggressive strategy to inject doubt into the public debate. Haven't you all felt the side effects of that? Ooh, some tantalizing arguments with normies over the past few years. Quote, victory, according to the American Petroleum Institute memo, quote, will be achieved when the average citizen understand in parentheses recognize uncertainties in climate science. Unless climate change becomes a non-issue, they there may be no moment when we can declare victory. The memo later leaked to New York Times that year went on to outline how fossil fuel companies could manipulate journalists and the broader public by muddying the evidence, by playing up both sides of the debate, by portraying, portraying those to seeking reduce, reduce emissions as out of touch with reality. 
Well, who's out of touch with reality now as our country and world bakes? Greenland just unleashed massive amounts of water, raising sea levels from a melt from the heat wave. Nearly 25 years later, the reality of climate change is now clear to most Americans as heat waves and wildfires, rising sea levels, and extreme storms become more common. Last week, Biden announced moves intended to expand offshore wind through though he stopped short of declaring a national climate emergency. A Supreme Court ruling last month limited the federal government's ability to regulate carbon emissions from power plants, meaning that will be up to the divided Congress to pass any meaningful limits on emissions. Even as survey shows that the public generally has become more concerned about climate change, a sizable number of Americans have become even more distrustful of scientific consensus. Again, quote, the tragedy of this is all over social media. You can see tens of millions of Americans who think scientists are lying. I'm something of a scientist. Even about things that have been proven for decades, said Naomi or Oreskes, a historian of science at Harvard University who has written about the history of climate change disinformation. Quote, they've been persuaded by decades of disinformation. The denial is really, really deep. End quote. And persistent. Last, just last month, even with record heat in London, raging wildfires in Alaska, and historic flooding in Australia, the Science and Environmental and Policy Project, a pro-fossil fuel think tank, said the scientists had it wrong. There is no climate crisis, the group wrote in a newsletter. Years before COVID-19 set off a wave of misinformation, a former President Trump lies about the 2020 election helped spur an insurrection in the U.S. Cop capital. Fossil fuel companies spent an effort to undermine the support for emissions reductions. Now, even as the same co companies promote investments in renewable energy, the legacy of all that climate disinformation remains. It's also a contributor to a broader skepticism of scientists, scientific institutions, and the media that report them, a distrust reflected by doubts about vaccines or pandemic-era health measures like masks and quarantines. Quote, it was the opening of Pandora's box of disinformation that has proven hard to con control, said Dave Anderson of the Energy and Policy in Institute, an organization that has criticized oil and com companies for withholding what they knew about the risk of climate change. It's just like the big tobacco. It's just like big tobacco, okay? Starting in the 1980s and 90s, as public awareness of climate change grew, fossil fuel companies poured millions of dollars into public relations campaigns denouncing the cumulative evidence supporting the idea of climate change. They funded supposedly independent think tanks that cherry-picked the science and promoted fringe views designed to make it look like there were two legitimate science of the dispute. Since then, the approach has softened as the impact of has become more apparent of climate change. Now, fossil fuel companies have to are more likely to play up their supposed pro-environmental record, touting renewables. I'm going to skip ahead here. Quote, we are living with an extended multi-decade campaign executed by the fossil fuel industry. The debate over climate change was manufactured by the fossil fuel industry in the 1990s, and we are living with that history right now. The, the impact of that history is reflected in public opinion surveys that show a growing gap between Republicans and other Americans when it comes to climate change. While the percentage of Americans who say they're concerned about climate change has risen, Republicans are increase, increasingly skeptical. Last year, Gallup found that 32% of self-identified Republicans said they accepted the scientific consensus that pollution from humans is driving climate change down from 52% in 2003. By comparison, the percentage of self-identified Democrats who say they accepted that human activities are leading to climate change increased from 66 to 88 over the same time period. Fossil fuel companies deny any intent to mislead the American public and point to investments in renewable energy as evidence they're taking it seriously. Quote, Exxon, the D Darren, DEO CEO Darren Woods, and also I just want to, another quick break. This, these fossil fuel companies have raked in billions of profit dollars of profit. I think Exxon Mobil is, is going to break in from last quarter like 14 billion. They're cashing out now big time. They're trying to go to Mars, they're trying to build an underground bunker. Maybe. Like the CEO Darren Woods, he tells mem members of Congress last fall, has long acknowledged the reality and risks and has devoted significant resources to addressing those risks and have always been truthful, fact-based and consistent. 
asked about the role in spreading climate misinformation, a spokesman for the Southern Company pointed to recent expansions in renewable energy as in, in, initiatives meant to set, offset carbon emissions. The 1998 Victory Memo laid out the industry strategy was created by the American Petroleum Institute. That's exactly what our industry has been focused on for decades. Um... Any suggestion to the contrary would be false. A 1998 memo is one of several do documents cited by climate activists and some Democratic lawmakers who say that they could be used, they could use them to hold them legally responsible for misleading ratepayers, investors, and the general public. "Quote: It's time for these companies to answer for the harm they cause," said Representative Ro Khan of Democrat of California. Republicans, however, have Democrats said Democrats want to focus on climate misinformation to distract from failed environmental policies that's driving up gas and energy prices. This eternal tug of war between gas and energy prices. And, um, hmm, I don't know the future of all life on the planet. So what did we learn here? The emphasis of these two videos of these two news articles was that um, we can't agree upon anything, and by the on anything, we're completely divided um, in every way, and uh, we've been sowed a great big lie that's took and taken several decades, and now we have lung cancer, and the planet's air conditioner is failing, among other things. Uh, we're going to lose everything. So maximize your day. Hit like and subscribe. Thanks for tuning in. And I'll catch up with you later, homies. Peace.